Hi everyone, welcome to Woolen Spinning. This is episode 90. I want to thank you so much for joining us today, especially thank you to the Patreon subscribers to the show who are joining us in the live stream today. The show is live streamed every second week, about twice a month, and I want to thank you all for being here. In today's show, we have um, a little teeny, teeny, tiny bit of housekeeping, more just um, reminding you about the giveaway that's going on right now. As you can tell, I have laryngitis. I'm My voice is kind of coming and going, so we're going to keep the show quite short today, and I just want to thank everybody for taking the time out of their day. I have two spins that I want to talk about. One is finished and one I just started and I want to talk about some hand spun knitting because I haven't talked about hand spun knitting in quite a while and um, it's always fun to um, talk about that stuff. So we have a giveaway going on in the Ravelry group right now. It is for everybody regardless of whether you are a Patreon subscriber or not. Um, it is a 100 gram um, um, bump, I guess, of combed pencil roving. It is Montedale and it is from Sheep Spot. This has been in my stash for a very long time and I keep pulling it out and I keep meaning to spin it and I just don't get to it. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to pay it forward to somebody who will spin it. So if you would like to win this um, four ounces uh, or 100 grams of Montedale top, you can go into the Ravelry group and you can tell us who your favorite people are to spin with if you spin with people. I know there are a lot of people in the Ravelry group who are saying they actually like to spin on their own the most. So thank you for sharing. I will draw for that uh, next show, the first show in March, and I hope that you win. Although you can't all win, so whoever wins, congratulations. <laughs> um, that's it for housekeeping. <coughs> we have um, the book club going on in the group right now. We are uh, discussing um, uh, a Stash of One's Own by Clara Parks, so I hope that you're participating in that. And that's in the Ravelry group and on the Slack channel. And um, we are coming to an end of this um, Breed and Colour Studies. It's going to sort of start to wind down into the spring, and we'll be starting our next Breed and Colour Studies April 1st. That doesn't mean that our current one stops, it just means that there's a little bit of overlap while we're generating our photos and deciding what we're going to study for colour. Um, for our next study. So there'll be a little bit of overlap for a couple months while people are finishing up their spinning. And um, I'll leave all of the breed and color study threads. They'll be all stickied still so that you won't lose any of that and they won't get lost in the ch chatter down lower in the in the um, threads on the Ravelry group. If you're not a member of the Ravelry group, you can find it wool N, like the letter N spinning. Um, on Ravelry, you can just search for it or they'll be linked in the show notes at welfarepearls.com or patreon.com slash welfarepearls. And I hope that you join us in the Ravelry group. Um, okay, let's get into what I want to chat about today because um, I can feel my voice already going and we've only been chatting for a few minutes. So uh, um, what do you guys want to talk about first? I'm going to put it up to you guys. Um, we can talk about knitting first. We can talk about the spin that I just started or we can talk about my finished spin. So what do you guys want to do? Because you're very quiet in the chat channel right now. So you guys decide and I'm going to take a drink of water. made a comment in the in the um, pop-up channel that um, I'm very good at setting the computers up. <laughs> I've had a lot of practice. <laughs> I'm also very techy. I think it would be very difficult to do something like this and to have a setup like this if you weren't sort of naturally techy or if you had somebody who could come in and set it all up for you and then you could just sit down and record. I think it would be very difficult um, if it didn't if it wasn't something that you already sort of knew a lot about or had somebody who could do it for you. Um, I'm naturally very techy and my husband is a tech guy, he's a director of technology, so um, yeah, it's um, definitely something that I've, I've had to learn a lot as well and I've had to learn how to use multiple programs, so um, yeah, it just make, it, it's something that I've had to, I've had to 
really focus on. You guys want to talk about the spin that I started. Okay, awesome. Um, I started a spindle spin because we're coming up into the fall and I'm gonna switch my cameras around here and you guys can see. And I'm gonna lose the chat for just a sec. So I have to wait for the cameras to switch and then I have to bring up the chat again. So those of you who are kind of used to some of these delays or sort of um, know what to expect. So I'm actually spinning this on my Kapara spindle. This is a 30 gram Turkish spindle. It is from Natural Knotwood. Um, they're located in Winnipeg, actually. Um, actually, just outside of Winnipeg. I think they're in, no, they, are they in Brandon, Manitoba? I can't remember. Anyways, they're just, out, they're, they're in Manitoba, which is a province in Canada, one of our prairie provinces. Um, this is actually my, my favorite spindle that I own. Um, it was quite expensive. I think it was like 60 or $70 Canadian, which for me at the time, like, um, I wasn't sure I was going to love spindle spinning, but the reason why I ended up buying it was because I had a couple of their medium spindles, which are um, about 18 grams, 15 grams, and I just loved them. And I really wanted a slightly bigger spindle because my favorite weight of spindle is between 25 and 45 grams. My absolute most favorite is between 25 and 35 grams. And... Um, I started this little spin. So this is um, from Bastidor, and those who've been with us for a long time, will that name will um, ring a bell. This is fiber. Um, my friend Nina, who is uh, N La Fontaine on Instagram, um, she sent four um, bumps of this. They're about 3.5 ounces each. She sent me gray, um, a black charcoal gray, this gorgeous yellow and then a really light yellow um, that I could use all together in a spin. So spin them all and then use them together or blend them up with something or, you know, she said like just play. Um, and it's by, it's Bastador. So this, this is from um, Sheep down in Chile in South America because she lives in Santiago. And um, I have a real um, love and affinity for anything sort of from Chile and from um, that part of the world partly because my husband and I spent some time down there a couple of years ago and um, we just really fell in love with South America and with the people and so she sent me this to spin um, handcrafted Patagonian wools so I spun this on my wheel this gray one and I've been meaning to spin the other three and kind of match the weight and match the um uh, twists and, and the spin and everything so that eventually I'll have the four skeins done. Um, this one I think ended up being just shy of 200 um, yards I think if my memory or it's like a, right around 200 yards and so I matched it to this so I'm spinning to the same um, grist which is yards per pound and the way that I did that was I have this spin all chronicled on a spinner's control card which actually I didn't bring I should have and um, I have been matching it um, while using it while I've been spinning this and um, I did speak while I did spin this on my wheel it is possible to um, translate spins onto spindles and onto other wheels and whatnot and that's where your spinners control card really comes in handy because you need to know like how many twists per inch and what your draft was and all of that kind of stuff and thankfully I had that all written down so um, I've been spinning this and I, I just started this is my second bump of fiber and um, Sorry for the crinkling by the by the phone. And I've been keeping my Sukaplaki um, control spinners control card near me so that I can lay um, the singles on. Let me just turn this around. Lay the singles on and make sure that I'm spinning close to sort of what I need. So what I need for this spin is roughly 24 wraps per inch for the singles and then um, it'll apply up to roughly sort of between 12 and 14 wraps per inch. I'll actually just take this off the spindle and I'll show you guys that and you can really see it. Yeah, silver and gold, aren't they gorgeous? Oh, um, so my, my absolute most favorite um, color combination right now is um, yellow and gray. Like, they're, I just, they're my, this is actually, if you guys don't know me very well, this is actually my favorite color, this color here. Um, it's my, I just love that, that mustardy yellow. So it um, spins up to about 14 wraps per inch. Um, and my singles are spinning to roughly 24 wraps per inch. So that is what the finished gray is. So I just need to keep matching it and, um, I've just been carrying it around in my in my um, in my bag, super fancy Ziploc bag. <laughs> 
Um, and actually the reason why I keep my spindle projects in a Ziploc bag is because when I'm outside with the kids, if it gets dropped in the mud, I can just wipe it off and I don't have to worry about what's inside. Whereas if I have one of my fabric bags, um, if it falls in the mud or if it gets wet, um, of course if it gets wet, it'll go right through. Um, but if it, if it gets quite dirty outside, there's no way of getting it clean and then everything inside gets really dirty, which happened to me a few times. So I started, I went back to old school and just started using Ziploc bags for it. So um, for my spindling projects. And as the weather gets nicer and nicer, it's absolutely beautiful outside right now. It's a gorgeous sun. Um, I'm hoping that I can um, spin outside more and more. We've actually got snow on the ground here, which is really unusual for this time of year, but um, for whatever reason, um, or when it when we get the cold and the ice and snow, we do tend to get a lot of sun and we get a lot of rain here. So last weekend we were outside with the kids and I was spinning outside, which was really nice. I'm looking forward to doing that again in the summer. So that is just started. So I'm actually hoping, it's only three and a half ounces. I'm hoping that I can get that finished actually relatively quickly. Um, because it would be nice to go on to the next color. My goal is to actually have all the rest of the three colors, the charcoal, this one, and then the light yellow. I'm hoping to have them done by the end of August and then I can start knitting. And I think I'm gonna make one of, um, I think it's called Spice Market. There's a shawl by Melanie. You guys in the chat channel, can you remember? Spice Market, Mel is it Melanie? I feel like she's from Germany. Um, Oh shoot, what's her name? Some of you are yelling at the TV right now because you totally know what I'm talking about. Um, so the, on the spice market and who made it? Do you remember, Candy, do you remember um, the designer? Anyways, it takes four colors and I'm hoping that I can play around with it a little bit that I can use up all of the yarn that I've spun. And then I might have to add in a fifth color that'll be like the, the consistent color through the through the shawl. Melanie Berg. Is it Melanie Berg? It must be Melanie Berg, Tessa. You must be right. Anyways, we'll move on. Um, yeah, Melanie Berg. Thanks, guys. Um, hands by knitting. So, I have been working on this. I did show this to you guys at one point, but um, I haven't shown it in a while. And um, I think I showed it to you right when I started it, like right at the beginning. And I tried to get it to a point where I could actually show you on the show. Um, so I'm at the end of a row and not as opposed to being in the middle of a row. I was in the middle of a row last show and that's actually why I didn't show it to you. Um, but this yarn, you will recognize it, is this. So I have a Sweet Georgia tag on here but it's actually not a Sweet Georgia colorway. Um, sorry to be a little bit of a tease. Um, my friend Charlotte at Sweet Georgia, she actually dyed this. Um, it's on Superwash BFL and she, um, she was playing with dyes one afternoon and um, poured a whole bunch of dyes on and I talked about this on the show because I started spinning it on spindles and then it was just taking too long and I um, switched to my wheel to spin it. Anyways, um, I so she poured a whole bunch of dye on, so it's not, um, it 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 it's not a repeatable colorway because Charlotte didn't write down what she what she did. Um, anyways, I saw the fiber and I asked her if I could have it because I really wanted to spin it because as you guys know, these are totally my colors: gold, blue, and then sort of that hunter army green. Um, it's like it was made for me and I had spun it up last year so those of you who've been around for a while you'll remember me spinning this and I think I spun it on my um after I switched from spinning it on spindles I think I switched to the my Suzy Pro because I just gotten my Suzy Pro and um, I have to say this is actually one of my most favorite spins that I've ever done ever and I, I think part of it is because the spin was really interesting because she had poured the dye on and it was just an ever-changing constant like there was there was no rhyme or reason to how the colors were working up and it wasn't like I could really manipulate it particularly because they were just kind of poured on randomly so I stripped the fiber down and then I just spun and then I just plied and hoped everything worked out I ended up with one massive skein if you guys remember and then I ended up with this little baby skein and I really wanted to do a shawl I don't remember what my exact yardage was um, I'm not gonna bother looking it up it was quite significant 
and um, it was it came out as a light fingering very fine um, lovely twist angle but I, I did I did ply it sort of loosely anyways I just started knitting um, so I cast on um, I think I cast on like 11 stitches I've written it all down and I will publish the pattern just as a free pattern for anybody who wants to do this um, I cast on let me just focus my camera and uh, oh, that was my fault I cast on just a regular um, long tail cast on and then I knit um, a couple of rows of garter stitch I think I ended up with three six rows of garter stitch and I increased just like you would on a normal shawl so eventually this is actually going to be sewn together and that'll form sorry this will eventually be um, sewn together and it'll look like that at the top so it'll nicely sit together like that if you ever are knitting something and you don't want to do a garter stitch tab to start a shawl you can always just cast on the number of stitches that you're supposed to start with for your garter stitch tab and just start knitting to the pattern and then later go back and seam this little seam you just fold it in half and seam it together it's a little kind of a trick it doesn't look as clean as a really nicely done garter stitch tab but um, if you really hate doing garter stitch tabs you can do that and then I started adding in these little tiny sections of, um, of stockinette. So two rows of, four rows of garter and then stockinette and then two rows of garter. And I've just continued on with that. Yeah, it's a great trick. Um, Kelly just mentioned that that's a great trick. It's a really great trick. Um, especially when you don't know. So I use that technique when I don't know if I'm going to keep going with a project. So I don't want to have all of that work in the garter stitch tab and then and then you know when you go to rip it out sometimes the stitches get stuck um if i don't know for sure that i'm going to keep a project or if i'm just testing it and just casting it on i often will cast on that way so and then i've just been knitting so it just um i've it, you know it's so funny i often don't get compliments on stuff when i'm actually working on it um, and I think part of it is because a lot of people like in the lay public, they just don't, they can't visualize what it's going to look like. Um, and especially with shawls, right? Because they don't look pretty. Like they're, they're kind of bunched up on the, on the needles like this. I'm like, what are you really looking at? Right. Um, but for whatever reason, everywhere I've been working on this, um, I'm getting a ton of compliments on it, which is kind of neat. Um, and I think it's just the colors. The colors are so beautiful. And with a little bit of the garter stitch and then the stockinette, it breaks it up a little bit. So um, it's not too busy and it still really showcases the yarn. <coughs> That's exactly it, Candy. When I'm wearing it, nobody will know that the garter tab is any different. Um, so my plan is... I've been working on this at the kids' swimming lessons, so that's about an hour a week. Nora has swimming lessons for half an hour on Mondays. James has swimming lessons for half an hour on Thursdays, so that's an hour. Plus, at James' soccer practices on Wednesdays, and that's another hour. So I'm only working on this about two hours a week. And it's taken me all fall and all winter, because I cast this on, like, back in the summer. This is all I've been able to do because it's the only time I work on it. So I'm actually finally at the point where I'm almost done this um, ball this skein so this was the big skein so my plan is to work is to finish to the end of this skein this little this last little bit which my rows are getting so long now that it's using a lot of yarn every every row now I don't actually know how many stitches I've got but I've got a, a fair number now um, and then when I when I go get to this one um, my plan is to just garter stitch so until this skein is done so I'll finish with this patterning when I finish this skein and then I'll go to um, uh, garter stitch when I get to this skein so that's kind of my plan and then I'll um, I'm gonna do a beaded bind off to give it a little bit of weight for when I block it so that's the plan so I will um, write up the pattern I have been making notes as I go um, it'll be one of those patterns that's like um, you know this is how you do it this is the this is the the um, repeat um, this is where you increase uh, and then you know switch to a garter stitch border whenever you're ready and then when you get to the size that you want cast off like it's gonna be like just basically notes um, and this is a light fingering 
yarn, but it could work for anything, like any weight, any needle size. There's no gauge. Um, it would work really, really well for a thick, bulky hand spun yarn because you could just knit, you use huge needles and then just knit until you run it. Um, and you, you'd have a pretty, you know, a decent, fair sized shawl. So, yeah. Oh, Candy, great question. So Candy is wondering, um, how do you find knitting at an indoor pool? I've never carried my projects along to find out, but would the humidity affect the wool? So I haven't ever noticed a problem. Um, I So the way our pool is set up in the summer, um, they actually have garage doors. They're absolutely massive garage doors. Um, the whole one side of the pool actually opens up. So in the summer, it's great because I can sit there and the kids can be in the water. I don't have to worry about sunscreen because the kids are inside. But the uh, garage doors are open and there's no humidity at all. Um, in the winter, so knitting through the winter and through the fall with the kids, I haven't personally noticed an issue. One of the mums that was sitting next to me last year, she's a crocheter and she was complaining. And the funny thing is she was knitting on acrylic and she was complaining. There are two hot tubs at our facility and I have sometimes wondered if there's more humidity in the air than not, but it's only half an hour, so I think it's probably not long enough. I think if I was sitting right next to the hot tub, I would really notice it, but um, thus far I haven't, it's not been a problem. Um, and it's kind of nice because I can sit there and watch Nora and I can knit because I don't have to really watch what I'm doing. So, and same with James. And this is a light enough, small enough project that if it's really busy and there's nowhere to sit, I can stand and still work on it, which is kind of nice. So, yeah, so I'm hoping that it'll be done soon-ish. I'm not going to work on it any more than I have been. Like, I don't want to um, not work on my other projects just because this is almost done. Um, I've actually been really enjoying working on it at the different stuff, so I'm not going to rush it. Um, okay, the last thing that I was going to talk about... Oh, I could see how if the aquatic center was all closed up and there was no ventilation and stuff that it would be like a sauna and you maybe wouldn't want to take your stuff. I can totally see that. Um, I think it really depends on the type of facility it is. Um, at the pool that I used to work at, because I was a lifeguard instructor for a really long time, um, it was really, really humid in there because it was a, an older facility and that was really hard um, to be there and I wasn't a knitter like I had I hadn't I wasn't really knitting at that time so I never tried it but I know when I came out every day like you we'd have gotten out of the water and I'd been on deck for like three hours and my hair was still wet because it was so damp and humid so um I can definitely see how that would be an issue yeah Uh, doesn't garter stitch use more wool than stockinette? Um, it really depends on how you block it. So garter stitch doesn't use more wool necessarily. The stitches are the same. Um, I think what people find is that garter stitch tends to, um, it doesn't, unless you really stretch it out, it doesn't um, create as big a piece of fabric. So depending on how you block it and how aggressively you block it, um, it can, I'll show you. Let me move this out of the way. Um, when you swatch garter stitch next to stockinette stitch, um, it really it really depends on how you block it because you can. Let me see if I can get this in focus. So if you leave garter stitch so that this, the the ridges are right next to each other like that, um, or if you block it out like that and pull them apart, you're going to get two different gauges. So you have to decide how you want to block your garter stitch and what you like. Um, I tend to be quite aggressive with my garter stitch because this is super wash, so it's gonna very slowly over time bounce back and I'm gonna have to re-block it. So um, yeah, swatching is usually the best thing and um, trying to figure out you know what you like and what, what, what looks nice. Um, this behind me is um, not super wash and I blocked it, um, the cream, it's garter stitch. I blocked it quite aggressively and yet the ridges of the garter stitch are still quite close together. So it it really depends on what you like and what, what looks nice. But it's not that it takes more yarn, it just is a different type of fabric. So it's something to definitely play around with when you're swatching. 
Thanks for the question, Liz. I can feel my voice is really fading. So um, I think we're gonna um, finish up in a couple minutes here. So I had um, named the episode "The Spin That Ended" um, as sort of a riff on the song that never ended. That on the song that never ends. Um, this has been on my ma my Magicraft Susie Pro since October. I started it way back then. Um, I'm not sure if I started it. I started it before Spinzilla, but I ended up not spinning for Spinzilla this year. So I, it was sort of my project that I worked on through Spinzilla while everybody else was spinning a Monster Mile. Um, and I finished it. So this is Diz Daryl Ranch. It's a Romney Mohair blend. It's a 85-15 it's um, blend, so 85% um, Romney. Diz Daryl Ranch is... Um, located just outside of Kamloops, British Columbia. So Kamloops is um, about three hours north of where I live and Barrier is another sort of 20-30 minutes north of Kamloops and that's where uh, Lori is um, located. And I'm really trying to get Lori onto the show, onto Wool and Spinning Radio to chat with her about her operation and what she does and um, because her story is really interesting and uh, she's a lovely person. Um, I think you can find her online at disdaryranch.com but I'll link it in the show notes. Um, so this was a pound of her pin drafted roving that was done at the mill up in Kamloops that has just reopened in the last few years. And uh, I, this was just an awesome spin. And my friend Jessica, who's part of our Patreon community, she was spinning the same stuff but in gray. And you guys remember I had that little bit of a gray um, sample that I was spinning up as well. And I was going to do this for my hap spin. So this was going to be for my shawl. that We're doing um, um, a hap spin along in the Ravelry group for those who want to participate. If you want to do a sweater, there's a sweater group. If you want to do socks, there's a sock group in the Ravelry group. And so this was going to be my um, hap spin. But I ended up two plying it because I wanted a traditional hap. And uh, it's I've ended up with 1,600 yards. So... Um, I'm kind of torn about whether I maybe want to swatch a little bit more and maybe play around with the idea of doing a really lightweight sweater because this ended up being a heavy fingering. And there's a couple of um, really awesome sweaters on uh, Ravelry, um, particularly by Hohi Locatelli, that are fingering weight and they just look awesome. And to spin this much yarn again for another for a sweater like that, I'm not sure I really want to do that. And it came out so evenly that it would be a great opportunity to knit quite a good size sweater at a relatively fine gauge, you know, on like three millimeter needles or whatever. So I'm kind of torn now what I want to do. Um, it's a hu It was a huge spin and I have to admit I'm completely burned out on it. Um, and I thought I would show a little bit of me plying it because uh, it ended up being a huge project. And it is really exhausting. So I had my bobbins and um, I'll post a few photos of, of the bobbins before I applied. I had, I think, five bobbins. And I completely miscalculated um, which bobbins to ply from. So I ended up with one almost one almost full bobbin. And so I had to ply from a center pull ball for the last little bit and I hate doing that on these big spins because it means that you're not mixing up your singles very much and you just don't get that um you just don't get that sort of even like evening out of all of the singles because you're basically plying back on itself one bobbin's worth of spinning and I I like to mix up my singles a bit more so that was just really bad planning on my part um, but in the end this is the skein that ended up being plied back on itself and it's it's definitely a little bit finer than the other ones which is a bit too bad it's funny because it also ended up with the most ply twist which is kind of funny so the other ones ended up quite quite well balanced and this one ended up with quite a bit of bounce and quite a bit of sprawling the other ones um, only twist back on themselves once so We'll have to see how this little baby skein fits in with all of it. This skein is only, I think it's only, most of them are 440, 420 yards, and this one's only 150 yards. Um, but these ones are all, like this is 420, 440, uh, 
400. So they're all like relatively big skeins. This one's the next smallest and it's um, 350. So they, these are big skeins. These, so these are the ones that I'll probably use. Um, Liz is asking if I consider dyeing it. I am, I am very seriously considering dyeing it. Um, what my plan is right now is actually to take, um, um, so if I end up doing a hap, what I'm going to do is take off the yardage that I need for the contrasting colors for the um, half Hansel or the, sorry, the full Hansel. Um, if you guys haven't seen that, it's by Gudrun Johnston. I'll see if I can pull it up here. Um, and I'm thinking that I will um, do that, like take the um, yardage off that I need for those. And I've got um, mohair in my eyes. That's why I keep touching my eyes. Um, mohair and alpaca, they really bug me. Um, I'm not sure why they are so hard um, like they, they irritate my eyes. It's kind of annoying. Oh, here's the full version. So there's the half Hansel by Gudrun Johnston and then there's the full Hansel. And I'm thinking about doing the full Hansel. And the full Hansel takes one, two, three, four colors. And um, yeah, I'm kind of torn. I'm trying to find a good photo of it. None of these photos are great. So this is the full Hansel there. And I was just thinking about taking the, the yardage off that I need. Um, but the problem is that even the full, the full Hansel only needs, at the biggest it needs 1600 yards. So it would, I would be able to use all of it. But, <coughs> um, I don't know. I'm really torn. It says here it takes 1,600 yards of yarn, so maybe I should stick with my original plan. But I am thinking about dyeing it. Um, and you're right. A full one would be really nice. A full hands, a full hap, like the the big square hap. And they do. They take a huge amount of yarn. So I mean, in some ways, like. I have done all the spinning for it and I've always wanted a full hap. Um, the problem is it doesn't get very cold here. So to wear one, I'm not sure it's very realistic, but then on the other hand, you can kind of use them as a blanket. Um, a couple of the moms at school, they wear, you know those blanket shawls that are really popular and you can get them, like they're not very expensive. Um, they wear them like as a coat kind of sometimes to come pick the kids up and I mean it is quite it looks kind of like it looks nice because um, here we can get away with that um, even when it's like minus three minus four it's just not that cold um, and a lot of them put like a puffy vest underneath and then they have that over top and I mean it looks it looks really nice so I'm not sure um, I'm just looking at the live chat I'm not ignoring you <laughs> does anybody have any questions about the plying um, what I did for plying, and you can see on the video, because um, I've kind of just left it um, playing in the background while we've been chatting. Um, the I didn't want a really super aggressive twist angle on this yarn. I wanted it to be nicely plied, but not too under plied and not over plied. So what I did was I actually put my regular flyer, which is the piece that's going around the bobbin. I put my regular flyer with a regular size bobbin onto my Magicraft, but I left my... Um, fast whirl. So if you notice at the back of my wheel, the whirl is quite a bit smaller than a standard whirl. And I have the green drive band going over the smallest whirl. So that's 28 to 1, um, if my memory serves me right. And that meant that I could get a lot more twist into my yarn a lot quicker because I knew what angle I was looking for and I just applied to the twist angle. So um, I didn't stop and you know try to manipulate that too, too much. Um, I just applied to what I liked for, for the angle because um, I had so much to ply and I was sick um, that by the by the time I sort of got to um, sitting down and actually plying and I'd actually finished my singles, I knew exactly what I wanted the yarn to look like. So that is what I did. I only applied to 
applied to twist angle. I was much more um, consistent about the singles because I felt like if my singles were exactly what I wanted and I just kept my ply twist consistent and um, made sure that I applied to about 35 degrees that I would be happy with what I ended up with. So um, way back quite a number of months ago I had done in the How I Spin content I had done some side by side swatching of um, this yarn underspun when I applied it and overspun when I applied it. Some of you will remember that. And um, I really liked the best the look of the yarn that was right in the middle. I didn't particularly like it super high twist <coughs> and I didn't particularly like it really low twist. So I tried to go for something in the middle and I'm really looking forward to comparing with my friend Jess what she got and then looking at our yarns side by side because I think in a lot of ways her and I probably ended up with very, very similar yarn even though hers is gray. So that is that spin. Um, I think that I'm going to sign off because um, I'm really, my voice is getting um, worse and my throat's actually starting to get sore because I'm talking so much. And uh, I wanted to say thank you so much to those who are in the um, chat channel today. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll have a much longer show next time because I have quite a number of things that I've been kind of saving to chat about. Um, I have another new spin that I started on my Lendrum that's just behind me here. Let's see if I can move right there. Um, and I also am almost finished. Do you remember um, last show I was talking about my spin that I had going on my Ashford e-spinner? Um, this spin is actually almost done. So I have uh, two more bumps of this fiber left. So I'm actually really hoping, fingers crossed, that I can get this plied and finished for next show because um, I think I've decided what I'm going to do with it. I don't think I'm going to use it for socks. Um... Yeah, I'll talk about that a little bit more next show because I'm still kind of deciding. I'm really torn about chain plying it or two plying it. So I will uh, let you know what I decided next show. So I've been sort of saving some of this stuff for one of my voices back and I can um, record for a lot longer. I think next show we'll also try and have an Ask Anything um, because we haven't done one of those for a couple of episodes now and I really enjoy doing those. So we can fall down some sort of a rabbit hole and have a discussion about something that somebody's asked in the Ravelry group. So if you have any questions about anything in the whole wide world that's within reason-ish, <laughs> um, you can go into the Ravelry group and um, you can ask in the Ask Anything thread. So thank you so much, you guys, and thank you for taking some time out of your day to spend with me. I really appreciate it. Um, and yes, I will try and get better. I can't believe I'm sick again. I, it's just crazy. I've been well since November. <laughs> um, I think that was the last time I had a really bad cold, but, uh, it's just, oh, it just sucks when it's right in your throat. I actually feel really good. Um, it's just my throat. Like, it's just my voice. So, say lovey. Have a wonderful uh, rest of your week. This will go up later today for Patreon subscribers and for those who weren't able to join us in the live stream, you guys will see the link in the chat channel or on Patreon for you guys. So the show will be live in a couple of hours and for everybody else, um, you'll be watching this in a couple of days. Until next time, happy spinning and have a wonderful week. Bye everyone.